Graham Hill sponsors Joshua versus Molina on Sky Sports Box Office. Customer who late clap, Frank, well done. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Have a seat, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Manchester. And I'm sitting on this table, very, very proud to be involved in a show of this magnitude, with the fighters of this magnitude. So many world-class fighters, world championships on the line, British titles on the line, number one positions, number one heavyweights in world rankings. It has absolutely everything, this card on Saturday night, of course, live and exclusive on Sky Sports box office. 21,000 in the Manchester arena for a huge card, uh, starting live on Sky Sports at 5.30 and also broadcast, oh sorry. Well done, Johnny. Thanks, hey. mate. Well done, Johnny. <laughs> also broadcast live on Showtime in America as well. Um, sponsored by William Hill, JD Sports, Stub Hub other partners around the world. Firstly, before we speak to all the fighters on the tables here, I'm going to pass over to our exclusive broadcast partner, Adam Smith, Head of Boxing for Sky Sports, to say a few words. Thanks, Eddie. Johnny has done that at every single press conference, I think, in the last six months, so well done to him. It's wonderful being back in Manchester. It was a great night last night at the arena, uh, where the fans uh, got to see uh, all the fighters working out, which I think was uh, a real positive, and it's, uh, it's terrific to be back in the city. You know, the, you hear about Ricky Hatton getting the headlines, uh, obviously we had uh, Mike Tyson here, Joe Calzaghe's fought there, David Hay, so many others, Carl Frotch, George Groves recently, that cracking fight, but also the, the rest of the supporting card doesn't always get mentioned. The nights we have with, with Jamie Moore, with Michael Gomez, with Anthony Farnell, superb fighters from this area. Uh, on the bill and there's, uh, there's another stack full on Saturday night. Really looking forward to seeing Marcus Morris in early doors. I think he's got huge potential to go very far in the sport. Chatting with uh, Jose Burton yesterday and uh, we welcome Frank Buglioni. What a terrific fight that is for the British title. That's going to be an all action affair and I cannot wait for that one. Good to see Luis Ortiz over here as well. We had him in, uh, in Monte Carlo. We didn't see his best. I've seen his best before, and his best is going to be a real threat to the heavyweight division. But David Allen's a tough guy. You know, we saw him go plenty of rounds with Dylan White. He spun a lot of top people in the country, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how that develops as well. Caliify, Lewis Conception, what a great matchup that is. Lewis Conception, a two-way champion. Um, Cal wants to fight the best. Um, he knows how I feel about him. I think he's a, a world champion in waiting, but is he good enough on Saturday night to do it at this stage of his career against this tough guy, Conception, who comes with so much uh, ability and experience? I think it's going to be a real test for Cal, but it's one I, uh, I think he might well be able to get through. Callum Smith, Luke Blackledge for the British title. Another really good fight. I want Callum Smith. I mean, he's, been, he's, had a, he's had a difficult year, but I want to see him in with the likes of, of James DeGale, Banu Jack, and, and the top guys. But he's got business to take care of first on Saturday night. So really excited about that one. There's uh, plenty of others on the card, as we're going to find out tomorrow. We've got Katie Taylor uh, as well. Uh, and then later on, we'll see Dylan White, Derek Chisora. So for us, it's a car that's going to start at 5.30 on Sky Sports Box Office. And we're just going to roll them out. We're going to roll them out for the fans. There's good fights, young fighters, guys fighting for their careers, guys fighting with huge futures. So I'm um, really looking forward to, uh, to seeing it all unfold in this great city of Manchester. It's good to be back. Thanks, Adam. Difficult to know where to start. We're going to start with a young man who, as Adam quite rightly says, in any flourishing fighting city, you need the new breed coming through. Of course, we've got youngsters Connor Ben, Katie Taylor on the bill as well, but a young man in Marcus Morrison that's really ready to explode on to major titles in 2017, and Marcus looking to end the year with a bang. Yeah, it's a... It's a... It's a massive bill once again, and... Uh, I'm glad to be a part of it, only a small part, but no, I, I can't wait to get out there Saturday night and I've got a tough opponent, he's, uh, he's durable and I'm, I'm looking forward to showing you know, the people of Manchester what I'm capable of. An already WBC international champion, Phil 2017 is a big year for you with some major titles. Yeah, 2017 is definitely a year where you know, I'll be stepping up and you'll see me in some, uh, some good fights, in, uh, you know, some good 50-50 fights and I'm looking forward to it, I'm, I'm ready. 
Another fight I can't wait for is the number one ranked heavyweight in world boxing, Luis Ortiz, against this man in front of me, Dave, David the White Rhino Allen. I mean, this man, one, is a joy to work with. As soon as we started working with Luis Ortiz, I got a private message on Twitter saying, please get me that fight, stick me in with Ortiz. He did it with Lewis, uh, with uh, Dillian White on two or three weeks notice, but this time has had a proper camp. Sparring with Dillian White, he's in great shape. We know he's a huge underdog in the fight, but David Allen, this is an opportunity that you were absolutely desperate to take, and you got your wish for Saturday night. Yeah, um, you know, Lewis Ortiz is probably one of the best heavyweights in the world. I don't know if he's the best heavyweight in the world, I can let you know Saturday night. I was going to say something quite funny, but he sat closer than I anticipated. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm going to crack on with the sensible stuff. Um, yeah, I know, I know how big a challenge it is. You know, it's probably a bigger challenge than a white fight, but I believe I'm a lot better fighter now than I was then. I've uh, got a lot of respect for him. I don't think he's a great fighter, you know, but I don't shy away from any uh, challenge. And uh, come Saturday night, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, I fancy taking four or five rounds deep. See what he's got. You know, he's shown that he's he's good on top. <coughs> we'll see what he's like when a uh, little fat kid gets on top of him, start giving it him back. We'll see. We'll see what he's like then. You know, but yeah, it's a big ask. But I'm really excited. Man. It's a great show as well. So uh, thanks for uh, letting me know you and getting me on. Where does this mentality come from, Dave? You just you want to fight anyone, don't you? You don't care who it is. I mean, you know, Dylan White was a big step up for you, but now you move into you know one of the most feared heavyweights in the world, but with absolutely no fear yourself. Yeah, you know, I was brought up this way. You know, um, don't shy away from anybody. You know, the Dylan White uh, fight didn't go to plan. You know, but I won that. I wouldn't have been fighting Ortiz now. You know, and I got the correct fights, but the Ortiz fight came up. So, you know, he's the best ever in the world. So what? But, you know, who cares? It's a fight. You know, I, I fought. I fight for anything, I fight anyone for anything, it doesn't matter. This, is, this isn't about money, it's not about anything else, it's about pride. I want to beat them one everywhere in the world, I want to be recognised one of the best everywhere in the world and get to the very top, you know. And um, we'll see Saturday, I'm very confident. I've not come here to lie down, I don't lie down for anybody, you know. I will not lie down for this man either. Uh, I, I only see this going one way, I see me getting Lewis Ortiz out there later on, you know, later on. I think um, a <coughs> good fighter, but. I'm going to get on top of him, you know. He ain't going to get me out of there. He's not going to flatten me in a round or two. And then when I start giving it him back, then we'll see. Thanks, Dave. Refreshing attitude. Jay, welcome back. Obviously, uh, well, welcome to the UK, full stop. Had you over in uh, Monaco. It was a great experience. Obviously, the fight was a little bit frustrating, but now onwards and upwards, closing 2016 with a big bang and then moving on to that World Championship fight in your mind in 2017. Well, it's great and it's good to be back, Eddie. Um, we're excited. Um, we can't say much, but we're ready for Saturday. Uh, Lewis is ready to fight. We respect David for taking the fight. Uh, Lewis just hopes he doesn't do what Malik did. Malik said he was coming to give him a boxing lesson and ran for 12 rounds. Uh, he's ready. Lewis is ready. We're ready to go. And a question for Lewis Ortiz. Obviously, Malik Scott was frustrated but now ready for a great fight on Saturday. He said, of course, he was frustrated, but he's coming Saturday to fight. Uh, and he's going to do the David what didn't know why couldn't do. So let's stop. Look forward to that fight. One fight I think could steal the show, could be fight of the night, is a, is a wonderful fight for the Lonsdale belt. And that's the champion, Jose Burton, <laughs> against the challenger, Frank Buglioni. Jose Burton's been waiting for these big fights for a long time. Obviously, it was a fight that was scheduled for um, a couple of months previously. Didn't work out. Frank Buglioni picked up a cut in preparation for that fight. We've seen Buglioni in big fights, challenging Chudinov, challenging Kamitsky. And now he gets a chance to move up and change for the British title at 175 pound weight division. Frank, uh, we've seen the, the various clips going around. You've been in great shape and confident ahead of Saturday night. Yeah, well, this is, uh, this is what I love. I love boxing and uh, every part of it, the training, the build up, uh, the weighing, uh, it's, all, it's all just a great opportunity for me and I'm relishing it. And um, I'm gonna go in there and, and really put, put the skills to the test. I've, uh, I've trained the hardest I've ever trained. Uh, I moved up to light heavy, so I feel very strong, very confident. My sparring has, has shown that, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to taking that belt. 
One thing that surprised me a little is that the bookies have made Jose Burton a clear favourite in this fight. Does that surprise you as well? Um, well, I mean, he's the unbeaten guy and um, it's kind of my, my second fight at light heavy, so I'm the unknown. Um, but after this fight, I, I certainly won't be the unknown for his domestic clashes. And what do you take from, from the amateur stuff? I, mean, I saw a couple of clips with the promotional video. Do you take the mental edge going into this fight or is that... Yeah, of course. Um, I, it was eight years ago. Yeah, I mean, your, your mentality doesn't really change. Um, I, I've, I've seen Jose firsthand, he's obviously a skillful fighter. Um, but when the going gets tough, I've seen him quit. And, um, when have you seen me quit? I see you quit when I nearly knocked you out in our first fight in the amateurs. I also you see you quit you every you time he was training on the GB okay, trials. I'm going to knock you back. On the GB trials, how did you get on? How did you get on the GB trials? I'm when we went to the, the GB, GB trials. trials. Yeah. Who's dad? Hold can, on, hold can, on, can hold on. The GB? Answer the question. How did you get on in the GB trials? You was on the GB team for ages. No, we all went for the trials ourselves. All right, me, so you're, you're you, Agogo, and Kurt Garvey. Right. Who won me the ABAs when you got beat? Who, who won the ABAs when you got I'm beat? I'm just saying, who got on the squads? You got on the squads, but I won. Jose, all you did was walk around with your head down saying, I'm ill, I couldn't be here, I've got an injury. Excuses after excuses after I had excuses. Two days notice. And it was a fitness test. Well, there you go, there's the excuses. Yeah. Two days notice and it was fitness That's what test. I was asking for, okay. the excuses. Thank All right, you. then. We'll see who has the excuse on the night. Jose Burton, a big fight for you. And uh, this is now a chance for you to really establish yourself as a top 175 pound fighter. And uh, we know you're bang up for this fight. I'm bang up for this fight. I can't wait. He pulled out with five weeks to go um, on the last time with a nick. Tiniest nick. If I had that same cup, I'd be still fighting that night. But you would, because you ain't got the experience. You'd have gone in there fight and you got stopped out. Every time you've stepped up, you've been beat. You've been knocked out. You got beat off a chudden off. Who's a small man? And um, who no one's going near? But carry on. No one's going near. He's too small. He's too small. And um, Lee Markham. He he would have beat you if you wasn't such a big name, a ticket seller, right? He would have got the win over you. But. You can sell the tickets, that's why we've got to go. Well, I hope you're getting your confidence <coughs> off okay, my yeah. past results. That's yeah, what I hope. Well, that's it, yeah. If you're drawing your confidence from yeah. my past results, yeah. you've had three different trainers money. trying to get you out of bad habits. If you can't get out of your bad habits with tips, you can't get out of bad habits. Your bad habit is getting hit, and I'll knock you spark out, guaranteed. Let's well, see it. <laughs> is that the way this fight ends? <laughs> this, this is the way the fight ends. Couple of rounds. If he chooses to box, he'll get out box and he'll get knocked out. And if he chooses to fight, watch. I hope he really does. He'll get knocked out early, so... You want to hope it's two rounds, because I've seen your stamina, mate. You've seen my stamina? Okay. Let's, let's hope for your, your sake, stamina comes into it, eh? Final predictions, Frank Ruglione? I think he'll quit. I think he'll quit inside about eight rounds. I think he's a muppet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't wait for this fight. I think he's a wonderful fight. Two very, very good young fighters and, and may the best man win on the night. A young man who I can't wait to see back in action has had a, a particularly frustrating uh, few months, obviously, since the huge Carl Frampton fight back in this city. It's Scott Quigg. Obviously broke his jaw in that fight. Um, a man that dedicates his entire life to the sport of boxing. And when that was taken away from him, we saw a, a broken man, to be honest with you. But now, rebuilt, stronger than ever, up at 126 pounds at featherweight against a very, very tough fighter in Jose Cayetano, who's coming off a strong win as well. Scott, it's fantastic to see you back. We know you live and breathe for boxing and uh, the smile on your face shows us how excited you are for Saturday night. Yeah, I think, like I said, the, the smile on my face does, it shows um, I'm so excited to be back. I live boxing, you know, and when it was took away from me, couldn't be in the gym, I uh, turned to food and I turned into a right pudding. <laughs> um, but it's, like I said, it's glad to be, I'm under, Buzzing to be back, or especially on a stage like this. You know, I was the last fight, pay per view event. So you know, I was headlining it with Frampton, and it was a massive card. And to be given the platform to come back to on another massive card, pay per view event, to show and remind everyone what I can do. And it was a, it's been a hard road, being out of the gym, um, not being able to train, and it was a frustrating time. And that's made me a stronger person because, you know, it was hard to deal with. My mum was, you know, kicking me out of bed at first saying, come on, 
get out running, get the train, go and eat well because there was a point where it was like, I, I was down. I don't like using the word depressed because people, you know, suffer from depression, but I, I was, you know, suffering with a bit of depression. I was down, but I come through that. And like I say, I've not looked back since, and I'm, now I'm thriving, and I can't wait to you know, get in the ring on Saturday night and show everyone what I'm about. Obviously, this time up at Featherweight, and a real test for you in Kayatana. You know, you wanted to come back in a real fight, and you, you realised the threat of him on Saturday. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's a threat. He's coming off the, the biggest win of his career. He's, he's riding high confidence. I'm coming off, you know, the biggest, you know, low of my career. So, you know, he's riding high confidence, but I am, you know, the training's going absolutely perfect. It couldn't have been any better. I've been training with a smile on my face, and I know the dangers he brings. You know, I'm expecting a tough fight, but one that I wanted to come back in a fight like this, and, and I'm sure I'm going to come through it, and at 126, you're going to see the best of me. Look forward to that. Jose Cayetano, welcome. Um, we know this is a big fight for you. You're coming off a, a, a very impressive win against Santiago and very confident going into this fight. I want to say thank you to God for giving me the opportunity and the promoter. It's uh, probably the most important fight I've ever had. And uh, hopefully I'll be the winner. Thank you, Jose. Talking about another great fight, and this is a fight that I really can't wait for as a fan, is Lewis Conception against Cowie fight. Lewis Conception is one of the best world champions in world boxing. Um, Two-weight world champion, obviously coming off that huge win in Japan against Koei Kono, who was the target for Kawi Afai as well. And when they had that fight, Kawi Afai texted me straight after the fight and said, please get me Lewis Conception. We went out, we did that, and now you have a fight on your hands between two exceptional elite super flyweights for the WBA world title. Firstly, firstly I'm going to speak to the champion, Lewis Conception. Welcome. We saw you in a very lively workout last night, and you and your team appear very confident ahead of Saturday. Eh, muchas gracias, le doy las gracias a Dios por, por, por estar aquí en esta conferencia de prensa, le doy las gracias al promotion, promotor, eh, y bueno, eh, estoy muy contento de estar aquí, eh, he defendido mi cinturón por primera vez, el que gané en Japón. I'm showing que... you my belt for the first time, thank you to everybody for getting me here and thank you to the promoter. Una nueva oportunidad de mi vida aquí en, en, en Manchester, creo que eh, voy a a un gran espectáculo porque vengo preparado, eh, mentalizado físicamente y eh, voy a defender mi cinturón con éxito con Kain Jafai. Uh, physically and mentally, it's the best sport I've been ever, and hopefully my belt, I'm going to beat Kain Jafai. I know I can beat him, and we'll see you on Saturday anyway. Muchas gracias por 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 lo presente. Eh, Thank you to everybody in Manchester. Eh, bueno. Estoy preparado y voy a darle un gran espectáculo el día 10 de diciembre. I'm prepared to put up a good, a very, very good fight. Thank you, Lewis Conception. Kawi Afai, I think the only way we could describe this is your moment of truth. You've had the apprenticeship, you've been all around the country, you've had the fights, and now this is your moment on Saturday night to become Birmingham's first ever world champion. Yeah, um, no, it's been a long time. I've been waiting for my shot. It's finally here. Um, it hasn't been a great training camp. It's been bloody brutal. It's been hard, hard work. But it's been 18 years of hard work, and I'm here. Um, and I believe it's destiny. I believe it's my time to uh, rip that title from Lewis Conception. He's a great champion. Um, he's a great fighter. But I just believe it's my time, and with the ability and with everything I have, I have all the tools to do a really good job on him on Saturday night. We know about Lewis Conception's style. We've seen him time and time again, I'm sure you and Max have studied him as well, and I'm, I'm sure you know as well, you're going to have to go into the trenches on Saturday night to beat this very, very tough world champion. Oh yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I know I've got, um, I've got to put in a performance, the performance of my life out on uh, Saturday night, but that's what I'm willing to do. I'm willing to do whatever it takes, I'll do whatever I have to do to make sure I come out of that ring victorious on Saturday night and be a um, world champion. 
Thanks, Cal. A wonderful fight, and Max McCracken here as well. Huge opportunity for Cal Yafai to become world champion on Saturday night. Um, as we're in Manchester, just before we go to the final fight uh, to discuss, I'm just going to pass over to Joe Gallagher to say a few words. Obviously, he has four fighters on the bill on Saturday night. Joe, a very brief uh, analysis of those fights. <laughs> <if you will. laughs> well, what time's just ordered? Exactly. About two minutes, please. Do you want me to apple and pears? Just... <laughs> no, just a normal. No, all right. Okay. Yeah. Now, listen, it's a great night. It's been a good training camp for my lads. I'm glad it's over. My arms are smashed to bits with the big hitters that we've got in here um, Saturday night. As you heard from Marcus, really one to watch. I know there's some publications out there picking him as one of the kids to watch in 2017. Um, it's a good last outing for him before he moves into more domesticated titles, Commonwealth British for 2017. I'm delighted to get Scott Quick having a difficult year, um, losing to Carl Frampton, being around the big fights, Anthony Crawler, Linares, Liam Smith out in Dallas, Stephen Smith, Connecticut, being in around the camp. You can see him itching. Um, last night, if you were there at the public arena, I said to him he was bristling. Very much like a, and he might, don't know if he, he minds me saying this, very much like a puppy, you get the lead, you're about to take it for a walk, he's jumping and yelping, he can't wait to get in our ring Saturday night, and then the year on a good, on a good high. Confidence gone really well. Then it goes on to the big hitters, Jose Burton, Frank Buglione. The, the amateur fight of the year was voted by Boxing News when the last four in the amateurs of the Bo GB box office and Boxing News this week have picked as this as the fight of the night come Saturday night. There's nothing more to say. You've heard from Frank, good fighter, operated at a good level and Jose Burton, the undefeated British champion. It's his first defence and I'm sure he'll be a very proud man in that arena Saturday night walking into that ring with that belt and defending it successfully. But then after that then we've got Callum Smith. He's 36 minutes away from challenging for a world title. No slip-ups. I've heard things where people think we're overlooking Luke Blackledge. We're not overlooking Luke Blackledge. Callum Smith is in the form as he is for Rocky Fielding. He's taking this threat very serious. It's his first defence of the British title. And he wants to go in there. It's got to be very proud for him and for the Smith brothers and the two who have fought and defended British titles before. This is a first for Callum Smith. Luke Blackledge, good fighter. Had good wins on his record against uh, Cameron, uh, Markham. Um, and it's durable, so um, the floss, it, boxing doesn't work that way. He lost to rocking around, Callum beat rocking around. Boxing doesn't work that way. Bit of a, a rabbit shot that caught um, Luke Cold had said in the first fight, we're treating this as a very serious challenge. I've nicknamed Callum Smith Ivan Drago, but he's punching that hard at the moment, my hands are in bits. But like I say, 36 minutes, all the lads know what's on the line Saturday night. I'm a proud to be part of Manchester Boxing, another massive night here at the arena. And uh, get there early, because we've got to see some good fights. And like I say, get behind the local talent like Marcus Morris and Connor Ben, all the young kids that'll be on the bill early. Thank you. Without, an, without a breath, a single breath. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to the last fight now. And as Joe Gallagher said, 36 minutes away from challenging for the Unified Super Middleweight Championship, um, the WBC have ordered that part of the fight between James DeGale and Badu Jack is that the winner must sign, which they have, and agree to fight Callum Smith next with no interim bouts, nothing at all. So a huge fight for the British super middleweight title. Firstly, Luke Blackledge, Luke, a great opportunity for you. As Joe said, the Rocky Fielding fight kind of irrelevant, and we know this is a big opportunity for you to spoil the party. Yeah, definitely. I've been given a massive opportunity, and uh, I'm going to take it with both hands. You know, Saturday night, uh, it's exciting times. I've had a mint training camp. Everything's gone to plan. So, you know, the best man will win Saturday night. Obviously, uh, Callum Smith, a great fighter, number one in the world. But you feel like that you can come in there and, and gate crash the party and spoil the plans for that unification fight? Yeah, most definitely. Callum is, you know, he's, he's you know, he's nearly on the world scene. Uh, so I'm not going to sit here and start, you know, downing him because uh, he is a top fighter. Um, I've been given the opportunity and like I said, I'm going to take it with both hands. Thank you. Callum, a lot of pressure for you on Saturday night, probably not just to, to win but to look good as well. Obviously no slip ups, big banana skin ahead of that big unification fight next year. Yeah, I've said before, it's not just about winning, it's about the performance for me. I've got to no look good doing it, I believe. You no know, Luke's coming to win, it's a big opportunity for him. So. I've got to expect the best possible version of him, but you no. Know, given that, I think if the best version of him comes up, then I should still have no way too much for him. I believe I can become a world champion next year, and if that's the case, then I should look good on Saturday night. And it's about the performance, and I want people to sit back after Saturday and say, "Yeah, I give him a chance with either Jack or the Gale." So that's been the motivation really. It's more just the performance and either big win. Although we thought that world title fight would come around this time. 
you have had three fights in six months, so you've been keeping nice and busy, but more motivated for this one, being an all British title fight than, than perhaps previous performances at the O2 and at Goodison Park. Yeah, is it, no, I know my opponent, I'm not just getting, oh you're fighting at Hungarian, or you're fighting at Argentinian, I know Luke and I know he's coming to win, it's a big opportunity for him, so it has given me that bit more motivation and was an ultimate last one before, you know, hopefully fighting for the world title, so again I need to perform, I can't be complacent and you know, switch off in the fight, I've got to go in and look like a future world champion and I believe I will. Thank you, we can't wait for that one for the British Super Middleweight title fight, a huge card, thanks for everyone here. Uh, tomorrow, Connor Ben will also be arriving up in Manchester. Katie Taylor will be at the press conference as well with uh, Anthony Joshua. And in about 15 minutes' time, we'll have the final press conference for Derek Chisora and Dillian White for the British Heavyweight Championship. We're going to have uh, head-to-heads up here now with all the fighters, and then the guys will be available for one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you very much.